1993, Namco released their new game, Ridge Racer, for their arcade board, Namco System 22. Namco described Ridge Racer as the most realistic driving game ever, since it featured 3D polygons with texture mapping, and the game was released on October 30, 1993 in Japan, and on December 1, 1993 in the USA. And it gave Daytona USA, a game that was made by Sega, a run for its money. And that game was released two months before Ridge Racer was released. Both games feature 3D polygons with texture mapping, and they both ran at 60 frames per second. Both these games were groundbreaking at the time, and they were pretty well received. In 1994, with the PS1 coming out in Japan, Namco decided to port the arcade version to the new console. And they released the game on December 3rd, 1994, the same day that the PS1 was launched. And on September 1995, in overseas, as a launch title for the PS1. The game received very positive reviews when the game was released, praising the game to be pretty close to the arcade, its graphics, and its gameplay. The port sold pretty well worldwide, as it got a greatest hit release in the USA and a platinum release in Europe. So, the question is, does the original Ridge Racer still holds up? Let's find out. As you start the game, you actually have a chance to play some Galaxian, which was released in 1979. After that, you start the game and then you can pick your course, your car, your transmission, and your choice of music, and you're good to go. Your goal is to reach first place and avoid running out of time, it's as simple as it gets. The game has only one course, but it has different variations. For instance, the beginner level has the short version of the track with two laps, whereas the medium level has the short version of the track, but this time it has three laps and the cars are much faster. Then the advanced level has the full course. and the TT, which is the time trail mode, which consists of you racing against your rival, not to mention that you and your rival are much faster this time, and also you could enter your name if you set your fastest lap. The track design in Ridge Racer is pretty good. It has a lot of diversity. For example, there's a huge bridge in the first half of the course, tunnels, and a beach with palm trees. It feels pretty fun to drive, even to this day. The game has 4 cars and 8 extra cars if you shoot all the monsters in the Galaxia minigame. Each car don't and never feel the same, as some cars are balanced, some have a lot of acceleration, and some are pretty fast. Not to mention some cars are named after Namco games, such as Xevious, Mappy, and Bosconian. After you complete the 4 main levels in the game, you unlock the extra mode which contains the reverse versions of the four levels. Also, if you play the time trial mode again, you'll face two opponents this time. That opponent is the black car, also known as the devil car. This car is pretty fast as he will overtake you in the first half of the track, and in the second lap, he will stay in the start of the track, and he will give you a head start for the next two laps, and you have to try it perfectly, otherwise he will wreck you. Your best bet is to use the Blue Galaga car, and it has great speed and handling. For me, this part is the hardest part in the game, as you need to use your driving skills to the max to defeat him. But if you defeat him, you will unlock the best car in the game, the Devil car. This car is pretty fast, and its handling is excellent. The reverse sections of the four main levels are not that hard, however they have only one checkpoint, so the time limit is more strict than ever, but it's still manageable. After you beat the extra mode, you're pretty much done with the game, as it doesn't have multiplayer mode, not even a linked player mode. This actually hurts the replay value in this game in my honest opinion. Let's talk about the controls. The controls are pretty solid. The real meat of the controls is to master the skill of drifting, as it required to master the tight corners in the game. To perform this technique, you have to leave the X button for one second and then press it again to perform your drift. At first, drifting around the corners might be a hard task to do, but if you master the technique, it gets pretty rewarding. The AI in this game, to be completely honest, is a joke nowadays. Granted, it was okay when the game was released, but during my experience, I found the game to be completely easy, or better yet, too easy for me, for the most part. 
except when I tried to beat the double car, it was a little harder than I thought. The game, while it doesn't have DualShock support, it supports the Neckcon. The Neckcon is a controller made by Namco, which was used in most of racing games such as Destruction Derby 2, Colin McRae, and Gran Turismo. With all said and done, the gameplay in Ridge Racer, while pretty barebones and basic compared to other racing games released after Ridge Racer, at the time when this game was launched alongside the PS1, it was a pretty good and solid as it's pretty accurate to the arcade version. However, the AI in this game is a joke nowadays and the game is too easy for today's standard. Speaking of graphics, compared to the arcade version are pretty accurate. Outside the frame rate of the PS1 version being at 30 frames per second, as opposed to the arcade version being at 60 frames per second, but nevertheless, it's still pretty smooth for a PS1 game. Granted, the graphics in Ridge Racer are pretty basic compared to other racing games like Gran Turismo and Need for Speed Forge Unleashed, but at the time, it was groundbreaking as it showcased the capabilities of the PS1. The car models are decent for the most part. The attention to detail at the time was pretty amazing. For example, the transition between day and night during the races is pretty good, not to mention there's a lot of Namco advertisements such as Starblade and Pac-Man. Not to mention the helicopter appearing at the start of the race is actually pretty amazing. Overall, while it looks dated compared to the other late racing games on the PlayStation 1, at the time it looked amazing as it makes you feel like you have the arcade version in your house. The music in this game is pretty awesome. You could not forget this. This? Or this? Anyway, the soundtrack is composed by the legendary Sinji Hose, who also composed the soundtrack of Tekken, Street Fighter EX, and of course, Super Dragon Ball Z. The sound effects are, for the most part, okay. The engine sound is the same for every car, the drifting sound is pretty decent. The announcer here is decent as well, he sometimes tells you that your rival is behind you, or he praises you for your driving skills. Fun fact, you can actually listen to your own music CD while you're playing this game. That is freaking awesome. Overall, the music is amazing, but the sound effects are average in today's standard. So, what's my final verdict on Witch Racer? While the game is pretty bare bones and basic compared to other racing games released on the PlayStation 1, it will be remembered as one of the most important games on the console as it showcased the true capabilities of the PS1 when it was launched alongside with the console. I would recommend you playing Ridge Racer Revolution as it is much better than the original game. Ridge Racer on the PlayStation 1 is a prime example of a game being outdated compared to other late racing games on the PlayStation 1, but it had its time and its place between the game that showcased the true capabilities of the PS1. Thanks for watching this video, if you liked this video hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for more updates. Thank you for your support guys, and I'll see you next time!